Nope. Very good. All right. Well, um, so uh, Dr. Michael Pullen is a chemistry professor at New Mexico Tech, and he's in the director of STEM App, and he's also a, a member of the uranium team um, uh, in the EPSCoR project this go around. So Mike, go go for it. Okay. Uh, hello. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the STEM App program uh, that's part of the education and outreach effort for the uh, EPSCoR proposal. <clears throat> so what is STEM map? It's the STEM advancement program. Not such a great name. We might change it uh, when we announce it to students. But in any case, it's an education and outreach program to involve uh, undergraduate STEM majors from non-research schools uh, in EBSCO-funded research. And the program pays most of the cost of that experience, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, the overall goals, though, are to increase the likelihood of students completing their STEM degrees, to get the, the two-year college students to transfer to four-year programs, <clears throat> and to get the four-year college students to make the jump to graduate school. Um, nationwide, uh, students in STEM degrees are less likely to complete their degrees than in other college degrees. They often switch to a non-STEM degree uh, partway through their time in college. Um, there's a low rate of two-year college students transferring to four-year programs and a low rate of students uh, transferring from four-year to graduate school. And uh, that, that rate is markedly lower for uh, students in underrepresented populations in, in both cases. Um, you can see in the state that pro undergraduate uh, enrollment um, pretty closely mirrors the um, distributions of the various ethnic categories, racial categories um, at the undergraduate level, um, but at the graduate level it's, it's dramatically different. Um, so that's what we're hoping to make some impact on. So the program is a 10-week summer research program. It starts on June 2nd and ends on August 8th. The first week uh, we have workshops on EPSCoR themes, uh, in this case Energized New Mexico, and professional development topics, uh, and that's that's held at New Mexico Tech. So we have all the students at Tech for a week, and then after that, we place them for the next nine weeks um, in EPSCoR funded laboratories around the state, and they conduct full time uh, research uh, with a team uh, at one of those places. We uh, pay the students directly. Uh, we pay them a four thousand dollars stipend for the summer, and we usually meter that out like a, like a paycheck every uh, couple weeks. Uh, we find, arrange, and pay for uh, dorm housing. We, pay, we give them a check for food and living expenses. Uh, we enroll them at stu as students at New Mexico Tech, and there are a number of reasons to do that, uh, but we give them three credits of independent study credit there. And, uh, you know, one reason is to make sure you're covered by um, somebody's insurance somewhere, um, and also making them students just just makes it much easier to, to pay them and to and to look after them. Having a, a the possibility of giving them a letter grade also is a good thing. This year, this in this round, we uh, we set aside five hundred dollars uh, towards conference travel in the year following the program for each of the participants, and we'll help them. Uh, locate a conference and locate additional funding. Um, the things that would need to be paid by the researcher hosting the student would be any research related travel, so if there's field work um, that needs to come out of the, the PI's budget, and then also the materials and supplies for the research projects need to come out of the PI's budget. And you know, we're really hoping that these students get involved in projects that are already ongoing, um, so I don't think that's too unreasonable. Uh, we uh, recruit the students to apply to the program. Uh, we make campus visits, we send out mailings, and there will be a website. Uh, we ask them for their transcripts, um, some reference letters, and ask them to write an essay or two about why they want to be in the program and what they hope to get out of it. They also, in the application, rank the av available projects by their interest, and so we know which projects they're most interested in. The applications will likely be due March 1st, and um, 
once we get all of the applications in, uh, we put them all together and organize them. And we send applications from students uh, who are qualified for your project and, and rank your project highly. So we send you those applications, and then we ask you to rank those, those applicants in order of your preference. And then we get all that information back from the various projects and PIs. And uh, because more than one researcher may rank the same students highly, we have to make some decisions about where the students will go and, and who we'll be working with. And uh, so we'll make the final decision on the acceptance and placement. Um, we then notify the students and give them a deadline to respond, usually a couple of weeks. And occasionally we have students who say no, if they've got a different job or their summer plans have changed. Uh, and so we just move down the list in, in the order that they were ranked, uh, trying to fill in the spots. Uh, we make all the arrangements for housing and payment and enrollment and all of that. So uh, research folks don't have to deal with that at all. And they, they'll simply arrive at your door on Monday, June 9th, ready to do work. A, a few details. Um, one important point about this is we, we place the students in pairs at the same location. So we have two students working on the same project or at least closely related projects, maybe slightly different aspects of the same project, but not on completely different projects. And we learned long ago uh, when we were running uh, REU programs at Tech that putting students in pairs increases their success and satisfaction in the program. When we asked them what was the most important aspect of the program influencing their success, um, work, having a, a research partner, uh, an undergraduate research partner, rank just below you know, meeting with faculty and reading research papers. So we feel it's an important part of the program, important part of the design. It really gives the students a partner to help with you know, confidence issues and problem solving. And uh, you know, this, this is often the first research experience for these students. It's the first time they've worked up some, at a research university. And so this is very intimidating for them and uh, they're very anxious about it. So I think just having a, another person to point through the same process with them is um, really beneficial. So we really ask that you don't split up the students and you know, give them to different people or put them on different projects. Now at the end, uh, we have a final uh, conference to wrap up the program. We ask all of the students to give a 30-minute uh, oral talk um, on their work and their results. That'll be on Friday, August 8th. Uh, we, pull, we bring everybody to the same location. Um, in the past, we've done it at New Mexico Tech. We've also done it in, in the Hemis Springs and El Rito. Um, and we'll figure out a location uh, well before the summer starts this year. The students may need to drive there the day before because they're scattered all over the state. And so we'll have housing available for the, the Thursday night beforehand. So what do we expect from the research folks? Well, each project really should host a pair of students each summer. And because of the start date, this will be running for four summers, 2014, 15, 16, 17. Uh, now, there could be a different PI or campus each year. So uh, you know, Dr. Hagee's project could host students at Tech one year, and at UNM another year, State another year. Um, however you, know, you want to do it, probably depends on where most of the research is happening, who has the time. We ask that you supervise them in a research project, obviously. Um, and we'd like this to be more than just you know, technician work. We don't want them washing dishes or just washing dishes or just doing the same thing over and over again. We'd like it to be a small project related to ongoing work um, and, and to have it be hypothesis-driven research. So help them develop the research questions, but give them a, 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 the opportunity to help form the questions, not just uh, do what you tell them to do. And you could provide them with some background reading in advance. The students will uh, often, you know, if you send them papers a few weeks before the program starts, they'll have read them. Um, the most important thing to making this work is to make sure they have a day-to-day -day supervisor that works well with undergraduates. Um, the, the few problems we've had have been when they, they just don't have a day-to-day -day supervisor and they're kind of left to their own devices. Or they're assigned, let's say, a graduate student who just doesn't know how to work with undergraduates or doesn't have much experience in it. And that often doesn't go very well at all. 
we'd like you to help them prepare for their final conference. They've usually never given a talk like this before, at least for a big audience like this, and so it's very intimidating, and they often just don't even know how to approach it. So help them with the data analysis and interpretation, obviously, but also help them you know, formulate and practice the talk. Um, We'd also like you to attend the final conference on August 8th. The students are just very disappointed when their research mentors and people in the lab they work with are not there to see the final talk. It's a big deal for them uh, to give this, and they've given you their entire summer, so uh, it would be just great if we could have a good audience uh, there. Well, while you're there, we'll also ask you to fill out an evaluation of your student, but also the other students as well, and we'll use that in our assessment uh, program to see whether or not we thought this this particular year was successful. Um, we'll ask you to participate in other assessment activities related to the project. So uh, the, the assessment person for the, the statewide project, they contact you with some questions and uh, it shouldn't take up a lot of your time, but we do ask you to respond. Now you, you can also give a workshop during the first week of the program and I'll, I'll show, tell you more about that in a second. So what do we do for you? Well, we handle all the recruiting and application uh, management. Uh, we enroll them and deal with all of the red tape associated with, with paying them. We book in and pay for housing. We plan and arrange the final conference. We help the students with the conference travel and funding, and we do all the assessment. Um, really, we want the researchers just to focus on being good research mentors. We try to make everything else uh, as easy as possible. We can also help with problematic students or, or problematic situations. It's rare that this comes up. You know, you have a student who just doesn't want to do the work or has some other issue. Uh, it happens once in a while, maybe once every two years, we have some kind of issue uh, with one student. Uh, and we can, you know, be a third party to sort of uh, try to step in and, and resolve things. And we can hold back their pay if, if they're not working. Uh, or, you know, remind them that they're going to be graded at the end of the semester. Uh, as a follow-up to the summer program, we also have an academic year program. This is new for this round of EPSCoR. Uh, the students will receive a stipend for their academic work in the following year. So that to get this, they'll have to develop an individualized plan with a mentor at their home campus, uh, you know, such as setting academic goals, um, things like that, report on their planned progress periodically, attend EPSCoR meetings and events. Uh, and we're still developing this, and uh, certainly before uh, we get into the summer uh, program, we'll have um, this thing better, uh, more well developed. What do we need from you right now? What we really need are summer research project descriptions. We ask the students to rank the projects according to their interest, and so we need to have the projects to advertise and for the students to read about on our website and when we go out and recruit uh, on campus. So we need a catchy title, something that is not too uh, jargony or, or academic. Um, we need to know where the students will be, locations. Now you can change the location dur midstream during the summer, so you can have students start at one university, halfway through, switch to another school. We can, we can set up the housing to make that happen if needed. Uh, we did that a few times in the last round. and It, it, it actually worked pretty well. Um, Edward Martinez and I sort of collaborated one summer, and the students spent uh, four or five weeks with him doing field work, collecting samples, and then we brought them down to tech and worked with me on the analysis. Uh, and it worked out really great. I wouldn't have them bouncing around you know, too many times during the summer, they do have to pack up everything they own and move, and uh, you know that, that eats up time and it's disruptive. So once during the summer is fine, I think. Though we need to know who the project supervisors will be uh, for this summer, and then we need a, a written project description, and it should be aimed at mid-level undergraduate STEM majors, um, two to three paragraphs, and if you have an image or a figure to go along with it, that looks. Okay, I was muted, I'm unmuted. Um, you should end the project description with a list of activities 
the students will do. So, you know, just physically describe what will the students do when they synthesize a new molecule, uh, test its structure using NMR, et cetera, et cetera. Just so the students have a, a better picture of what they will actually be doing beyond, you know, the academic topic they'll be studying. A list of majors that you'd be willing to host. If you really only want, you know, chemistry majors, you should say that so that we can only give you applications from chemistry majors. And we can also focus on recruiting chemistry majors so that we have some students uh, that are appropriate for your project. And also a list of classes that you think might be required for students. So, for example, if you want them to do organic synthesis, you might say that you want them to have taken organic chemistry one or organic chemistry one and two. We need to know that too, so we can find those students and also give you the right applications. What we do encourage you to be as broad as possible. The more restrictive you are, the, few, the, the fewer students you'll have to choose from. Um, so be as broad as you can, uh, while st still being able to give the student meaningful um, summer. We definitely don't want students to be in projects that they're not well prepared for. Uh, asking a student to do organic synthesis. Uh, if they've only taken general chemistry is probably not a good idea. They're not going to have a great summer. If you could get that to us by the end of the week, that would be wonderful. Maybe the beginning of the next week. But we need to get the web page up and, and start recruiting. So as soon as you can. Really, this is you know a one-page write-up. It shouldn't be too cumbersome. We also need presenters and ideas for the week one workshops. So these will be. Uh, the first week of June at New Mexico Tech. They could be uh, research topic related. So if you want to talk about solar energy or uranium in the Four Corners area or, or whatever, that would be great. Um, you want to try to make these things interesting and fun. Uh, you know, you can lecture at them for a while, but, you know, lecturing at them for half a day um, really just gets tedious and boring. And there, it is summer, and so they, they are they do want to do something more active, and so we we could have a two hour time slot, so half a morning or half an afternoon, four hours, which is more typical, you know, all morning or all afternoon, or even in an all day event. Um, for example, Sam Fernald from uh, Mexico State would held a Esequia uh, uh, hydrology workshop uh, this past summer. So they started out in the morning. They went out, uh, well, they started with an hour of discussion of hydrology and the kids. And then they went out into the field for the rest of the morning, took measurements, collected samples. And then they came back in the afternoon and analyzed the data and, and worked it up and discussed it. And that worked out great. Now the projects can involve uh, field work or a field trip. And we can arrange the transportation, with vans and drivers and whatever you, it is you need for the for the workshop. Um, the other thing we talk about besides the research areas are what we call professional development topics. Uh, for example, I often give a, um, a talk about uh, transferring to four-year colleges, what those degree programs entitle, how to, how to transfer, what are the issues surrounding that, and also graduate schools. You know, how do you find a graduate school? How do you pay for it? Um, Etc. Uh, we usually give a, a workshop on searching the scientific literature with uh, online databases, which is great. Uh, we've given workshops on preparing a poster or a talk. Um, we even gave one on GPS and map reading in the last round. We had a lot of people doing a lot of field work, and so that was very helpful. And if people have suggestions for professional development activities or, or something they really want to talk about, that, that's great too. Now we can give uh, people who do the workshops a small stipend and, and pay their travel expenses to and from tech. Um, so that should help, I think. And you can send this information to uh, me at New Mexico Tech or to Selena at uh, EPSCore, and we'll, we'll get the information put together and let you know if we have any questions. So that's all I have. Um, do folks have questions about the program or what we need? Michael, about how many students do you think you'll be able to support this year? Uh, we should be able to support 12. So six projects times two students in each project.
And what level are they? Do are they like finishing their sophomore year or finishing their freshman year? Um, we don't we don't require that they be at any point in their academic career. Um, we've had students who are finishing their first year of college take part and, and do well. Um, we've had you know students from four-year colleges uh, between their junior and senior year and they've done very well on everything in between. Well, it really depends mostly on your project and what you need for your project. If you really need you know, somebody who's you know, more of a, a college junior, then that's what we'll find and, and get for you. Um, but, uh, you know, there are a lot of small to your colleges around the state, and so we do recruit from them. And um, I was initially worried about this, that, you know, these students just wouldn't be ready. But uh, it was quite the contrary. We found that the students actually did very well as long as we were careful to make sure they had enough coursework done so that they could have a meaningful experience. Um, but we were careful about that. And the students did very well, and the faculty reported back that they were you know, pleasantly surprised with the two-year college students. So really, it depends more on your project than anything. Any other questions? Mike, this is Mary Jo. Um, so you need um, the researchers to send you their one-page description as soon as possible, correct? Yes. So this is what we need. Like I said, by the time you write this all up, it's usually a word file that's about a page long. It's not too, too onerous of a, a, a topic to, or uh, assignment. Um, just sit down, you can crank it out in a half hour or something. I think the other thing you need to do is talk with other people in your project and find out who wants to do this this summer. Think about how this would work. Uh, what, what kind of work will be going on this summer? And, uh, where would it be best for them to be placed? You know, who would be the best person to supervise them? That would take a little longer, I think. Just just talking with each other. Are there um, specific characteristics in terms of supervisors, like what to look for to know that you've got one who's going to work well with these students? Um, you know. In terms of grad students, it's, you know, the students who are good TAs, the students who've supervised undergraduates before. Um, I don't want to, you know, stereotype anybody, but the international students, uh, I think, are a little less, at least at first, well suited to this. Um, they come from a very different uh, academic system often, and so working with American undergraduates is not something they're automatically very good at. Although, um, I've seen it work. I've seen that work as well. And I think also, you know, a grad student who is further along in their career is, is better. Uh, somebody who's you know knee deep in the research and could use some helpers. Uh, those are often the most motivated, you know, grad students. Uh, grad students who want to go on in an academic career, they're going to have to supervise students the rest of their lives in that case, and so uh, they should take a you know real active interest in doing something like this. Um, but, you know, it could be a lab technician, it could be a senior undergraduate who's been working with you for a while. I've seen that work well. Um, I think it's more of a personality issue than anything. Motivation. You don't want to assign these students to, to a grad student who really has no other involvement in the project. Um, you know, then they're often not very interested in uh, being, being research mentors. Mike Cavey asks, can you send the requirements for the research project description via email? Yes, we can certainly do that. I guess we'll follow up the uh, email about the webinar with uh, maybe a one-page description of what we need. We can do that for sure. Michael, Steve Bulow, just to follow up on that, can you send the presentation out also? Not just the... Uh... Yeah, I think Lena is going to put that up on uh, the EPSCOR website, so we'll send out a link. 
for sure. And I think that there'll also be a recording of this, and they're going to put it on the EPS, New Mexico EPSCOR YouTube page. So we'll send you the link for that as well. Thanks. Sure. Last call for questions. All right, I think that'll take care of it for today. Thank you all for, for being part of our webinar and uh, we'll follow up with those um, links via email. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks.